So the question is, is like uh, just comparing the different server-side languages and, yeah. and uh, are there any arguments in favor of learning PHP instead of Go? And one of the arguments is PHP is huge. I mean, that's like the strongest argument in terms of like user base. There's a lot of code written with PHP. And, um, and so if you learn PHP, you know, for a long time, you're going to be able to get jobs working for somebody because there's code that needs to be supported that's out there. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't build anything with uh, PHP starting from zero. But if you want to work for somebody, it's a good skill to have, a good thing to learn. Um, my choices for language for server-side web programming is first, Golang. And my reasons are everything I just listed there. And then second, I would go with uh, Node.js, mm. just because JavaScript client-side, server-side is so compatible. And, um, and then Node.js is, uh, Go is twice as fast as Node, so Node is half as fast as Go. And this is just some of the, the ballpark metrics that I've seen. So Node is still pretty quick, but Node, you know, the fact that a lot of big contributors to Node left in favor of Go means they sort of recognized, like, why are we trying to build this thing when there's an amazing language already that exists, you know, that's even more robust and solid and faster and easier syntax to write with. I've, I've spoken with, uh, you know, I'm a teacher, so I don't get to code professionally every day, um, but spoken with professional coders and uh, they've, they've reflected to me on the challenges of doing server-side coding with JavaScript, how you know, it can become callback hell is one of the phrases I remember one of them mentioning. But my choices would be first Go, second Node, third uh, I'd probably do Python, fourth I would do Ruby and, and that's just sort of going up the performance you know, or going down the performance uh, food chain and then after that you know, I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> but PHP, Cold Fusion, ASP, JSP, that's all old school. That's the past. That's file based. It's not restful. And, uh, and if some of that stuff is like, well, I don't know what you just talked about, man. Restful, I don't know what that is. Don't, don't sweat it. We're going to go as fast as we go in this class. So however fast we go is however fast we go. And we're going to learn what, what we learn, you know? And so, yeah, we're going to try to move things along, but I'm not, going to, I'm not going to blow things out of the water for you. So in the past, they, they, web apps were built, and they're really file-based. And so let me just see if there's, like, you know, Cold Fusion file structure, because I used to program in Cold Fusion. So let's just see. You know, so, like, here's a file structure for, that's not Cold Fusion. Let's look here. You know, like we have different files that get called and run, and it's really file based. You know, PHP, let's see, PHP file structure. And, uh, you know, so here are different, you know, this is a good one. Here's, here's different file structure, right? Shipping has these different files which might be called and run. So it's really file based. And when you looked at a URL, so if we looked at a URL for this, server, you know, we might be at modules forward slash shipping forward slash free dot PHP and that would be the URL. So it's really file based. And RESTful applications, um, RESTful stands for representational state transfer and it, it's kind of like this concept that state, even though the web is stateless, state is, uh, is maintained like there's state on the server, and we take that state and we move it to the client. And, um, and anyhow, it's a little bit long-winded, the entire RESTful thing. But one of the main things with RESTful is to have uh, pretty URLs. And your URLs no longer refer to files on your file system. Instead, when somebody's at a certain URL, your server recognizes that URL and says, oh, hey, you know, somebody put in this URL and it knows to, knows to run certain code, right? So instead of calling up a file at a path, it'll just be like, okay, that one is, you know, I'm going to run this chunk of code on my server, which isn't necessarily a file. It could be just a function inside a file. So uh, that's, uh, those are my thoughts on different server-side languages. So when, when we program when we program for the web, I'll just take a moment to talk about that. When we program for the web, um, client server web. 
that works. When we program for the web, you know, there's a server, here's the internet, which is kind of weird because the server is actually in the internet and the clients are actually all part of the internet. But this is just like the cables, the wires, other computers you go through to finally get to this computer. And, uh, and so that's what's represented by that internet cloud. But you have clients and you have servers. And so server is where you host your website. And um, how many people are already aware of that? Raise your hand. All right, cool. And, um, and the way that that happens, and then clients are going there, right? So clients make requests, and then the server fulfills those, fulfills those requests and sends it back to the client. And those are just, like, that's it. You know, it's like a request comes in, and it gets fulfilled, and then the server for, forgets about you. You know, it's not like maintaining an open connection, generally speaking. There are ways you can do that, but the way most web apps are built, you don't. And, um, and so... Uh, I forget what I was going to say about this, what prompted me to say that, but so there's client-side languages and server-side languages, or there's a client-side language and then there are server-side languages. And on the client, we could do programmable logic with what language? JavaScript. JavaScript, right? So we could run JavaScript on the client and without interacting with the server, the application we built can respond to the client. And so the client can click on something and and, uh, and then the JavaScript could, oh, I noticed that the client clicked on this and I could run some code because they clicked on a certain thing. So a really common example is form validation, right? You're at a website and you enter your email and you hit tab and you enter, confirm your email and you hit tab and it says, hey, your emails don't match. It didn't have to go to the server to figure that out. All, it said, all JavaScript is doing is, is listening to see if the information in these two fields match and if it doesn't it displays a message. So that's code running on the client, that's JavaScript. And then on the server that's where we have functionality for our, our application. We interface with databases or data storage and, um, and we could run different languages there. JavaScript is the only game for client-side programming but on the server all those languages I was talking about you could choose from them. You could choose, right, go you could choose Node.js, you could choose Ruby, you could choose Python, you could choose PHP, ASP, JSP, going back down the food chain. Cool. I'm taking a Java class right after this, so will learning Go and Java together help me to make better stuff? Um, so, I would say drop Java, <laughs> just because uh, go deep. Don't go wide. And Java is an outs another outstanding language to learn, and nobody ever got fired for uh, suggesting that we build this in Java, right? Well, that's probably not true. But, um, but you know, I mean, Java is an extremely popular language. Like, when you look at the top languages in terms of employment, JavaScript's number one, and then Java and PHP are like two and three, <laughs> you know? Uh, so Java's fine. But Java also is, uh, is clunky in terms of like the syntax and it's got a lot of stutter, you know, and um, so if, if you're just learning to program, stick with, stick with staying here. We're going to have a lot more fun and it's a much better language and you're, you're going to learn the fundamentals and then in a year come back and do Java after you played with this for a year. And um, so that's, that's one argument, right? Or, or choose Java. And maybe don't do this one. Because when you try to learn two languages, for me, it's just like the stuff bleeds together. It's challenging. I was actually supposed to teach the Java class, but I said I can't do it because i got to focus on this. Hey, what's up? I was going to add the, since you're learning another language, like it's useful when you make apps to have a language to use on the server side, since these are server side languages like Python, Ruby, PHP, Go, all the ones that you mentioned. If when you make Android apps, half the good Android apps connect to a database on a server, so it helps to know the server-side language. Right now, me and my friend are working on the app, and I'm writing everything from scratch in PHP, and it'd be nice if I had a better language to work with. Uh-huh. Yeah, and yeah, so Android apps, yeah, a lot of really good arguments there. Android apps are, um, are, uh, are written natively in Java, but because Android is a Google deal, and because Golang is a Google deal, a year ago, or no, this, this last summer, no, about a year ago. Maybe it was last winter. Anyhow, within the last year, uh, they've now made it possible to write Android apps in Golang. 
And so, you know, um, they don't, it's not widely supported. And if you go and you do that, you're going into rogue territory. And, you know, God help you, you need to know what you're doing. <laughs> you're free climbing the other side of the mountain that nobody else has gone up yet, right? But, um, so Go works natively on Android? Yeah. Yeah, you could write Android apps in Go. But uh, I don't know how, how you do it, yeah, nor have I, I researched it. Quite yeah, that. yeah, because like the libraries and everything for yeah. Android are all. So I don't know if you just have to recreate it from the bottom up or what, or what's well, already out there. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, here we could just look and, and Android GoLang, right? Uh, app GoDoc, the Go programming. Uh, Let's lets you write portable, uh, here we go. Package app lets you write portable all go apps for Android and iOS. Hey, awesome. You don't have to learn two languages anymore. Goodbye, Objective-C and Swift. Goodbye, Java. Hello, Go. Google loves you. All right. So, um, so that would be something I really like to look into so in, in their life. That when you're, my point was like when you're a developer, it helps to know multiple languages when you're working on these projects that might, you know, sometimes you got this language yeah. talking to this language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's just all a labor of love, you know. And when you first learn to play music, you learn one instrument, and then after you've been doing it for ten years, you know six or seven. I go to family reunions. I went to a family reunion, and my aunt came out with uh, an accordion, and she said, who wants to play the accordion? Isn't that the thing that goes in and out, the keys, right? Yeah. And that's like a joke, right? You ask a room of people who wants to play the accordion. But my family reunion, like four hands went up. I'm like, I could barely play a little guitar, right? Like Simple Man or something. But um, my, a lot of my family's talented with that. Any more questions? Nice questions? Yeah, I have one. I'm yeah. creating a website from scratch. It's yeah, cool. Ideas and stuff. So could I, with basic HTML, and go link and I create an entire website. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Not only could you create one, you could uh, host it and serve it, and it won't cost you any money. It'll cost you 12 bucks a year for the domain. Right. And so, like, I created this over the summer, um, whackpresident.com. <laughs> and it's all JavaScript, it's all client side. Right, and so you choose a president, and then you get to play whack and wall with the president. And the president says things that you know the president, you know, recordings that somebody said. So somebody choose, and, and I wanted to make sure it's a joke because some of these people aren't presidents, but I just thought it was funny. So um, I don't know, choose the first one. I went to Washington to solve problems. I went to Washington to. In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in, to kind of catapult the propaganda. In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in. I guess politics never stops. I guess politics never stops. And then it goes back to the beginning. But that's all hosted. So if I go into WebStorm, and let me just open up... Uh, my projects and WAC president. And so here's the Go code to host that. You need something called an app YAML, and that's the configuration file. So there's my app YAML, and it's just basically a copy paste kind of a deal. And you can read about the different configurations you could set. But YAML stands for yet another markup language. And so that's app, my app YAML. And then here's the Go code for that. And uh, this Go code right here, just that little chunk of code, you know, I'm setting up a, a, a server and I'm saying, hey, serve everything that's uh, at the public folder. And so everything inside this public folder gets served. And so it automatically looks for the index.html and serves that file. And then, you know, there's that file and it runs, you know, all the supporting file and everything, all the JS. But the main, the main thing here is like, hey, can I, you know, create web apps with HTML and Go? Not only can you create them, but you can also serve them. So it's uh, got all that built into it. Any other questions? How much programming experience would you expect your students to have coming in? Hmm. 
Uh, it's okay if you have none in here. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, you should be quick with computers. So if you don't know right click and you don't know your way around, um, not good. But if, uh, if you've heard of terminal and command line and you've done stuff there, great. You know, um, and if you learn computer stuff quick, cool. You know, um, you know, like I said, you know, just try it out and we'll, we'll see how far we get. All right, you guys uh, ready to get started?